start off painting all you really need is a little bit of paint maybe a cup and you can use glue as your mix if you want a little glue and a little water um, to get it to the consistency you want and then add it into the paint um, and you can get all that at the dollar store if you just wanted to try it out for a fun experiment hi welcome to active art today I thought I'd take some time and just kinda of go through some of the equipment and the steps and different tips and tricks on or just stuff I've learned while doing acrylic pouring and different things I like to do um, in case it might help you or give you some ideas on, on some of the stuff you're doing or if you have any questions post them down in the comments and if I can if I've got the answer I'll I'll help you out um, and I will post down also in the description sort of a timeline thing when I go back through and edit it in case there's something particular you're looking for that way you know while I'd love you to watch the whole video if there's just one thing you're needing to know or have a question about um, then you can go straight to it first off when you're doing any sort of painting especially if you're in your home ideally you're outside or in a outside studio um, but if you're in the house I, do, I use a, I have an air filter that I run especially when I'm not here or I'll run it overnight to help clear things um, but especially sometimes I'll use masks but especially if you have chemical sensitivities you might want to pick up a respirator or something to use um, whether you're in the house or out. Um, I, I always use this when I'm doing spray painting I use it sometimes when I'm doing acrylic pouring. If I'm doing a lot of mixing um, I find that I find it most helpful then because you know you're stirring up all the stuff or if I'm doing a lot of paint that day I'll, and there's a lot of more chemicals in the air than usual then I'll, I'll use it. Alright, as far as surfaces go, this is um, the brown paper is from a big roll I got from Home Depot that in their paint section. I guess I, if you're painting part of your house or something they have it and you can roll it out and it helps protect things. Um, my preference when I'm doing pouring is to use throws a lot. Um, this is actually part of a shower curtain. You can see the little eyelets things, holes here. Um, the shower curtain material, I got this off Amazon. And I'll put links and stuff down in the description too in case um, you want to check out any of this stuff, see if it's something you might want to use. But um, the shower curtains are great because you can peel the paint right off, no problem. It makes great skins. Um, I've used trash bags, and this skin came off of a, a trash bag. I'm not sure if the camera will pick up the texture on it, but the trash bag has a texture to it. So it peeled off okay, but then, of course, now it's sticking to itself because I didn't lay it out right. But um, <laughs> the, um, So there's a little bit of texture, and you don't get that with um, the shower curtain. Some people use the skins to make jewelry or they or collages or other different things like that. I'm actually working on something. I haven't been able to get it's patent pending. So I'm not going to show it because no one's making it yet. I'm actually since I haven't been able to get a company to bite in on it, I've um, contacted a couple manufacturers myself and they're kind of giving me a runaround, I guess, since I'm not some big name brand with tens of thousands of units to order. I just Anyway, so we'll see if that works out. If not, I'll share with you how I made my prototype um, so you can do it. Um, there's different mediums to use. This is a gel medium. I use it sometimes, especially if I'm looking for something a little bit thicker. It moves a little less smoothly on the canvas, uh, but it actually does create... Um, I like the paintings I've used it for, but it is a little bit thicker. Uh, Let's see. Another one I use a lot is the Liquitex pouring medium. They make this in smaller bottles, but if you start doing a lot of pouring, you'll realize you go through a lot of pouring medium. <laughs> so ordering the bucket sometimes just easier. Um, I actually created a video. The first bucket I got, it took me forever to open. Um, and this one didn't take me as long, so I don't know if it's just a learning curve or the first one was made a little different I don't know but you pop the lids on that and peel it off 
because pouring out of here into a tiny cup is a little awkward, what I usually do is I transfer some of this into one of these that I did pick up also at Home Depot. Um, or any kind of sealed container will do. I just, that's what I had, so that's what I used. You can also use that to store a paint mixture. Um, I haven't yet, but it stores this quite nicely, so I assume if I make up a big batch of white or something, white and black are the ones I usually make in bigger batches. I'm sure that would hold it just fine. The other ones I use that you've probably also seen on other people's videos that do kind of help create cells. Um, this one seems to be a little less clumpy than the flood flow trawl, but I also think it's a little bit more expensive. So this is the only bottle I've ever bought of it, and it's pretty much empty at this point. I'm not sure if I'll buy it again. Um, just because I didn't see a big difference between this and the flow trawl, except that it seemed a little less clumpy, which is a big thing. But you can use a strainer or um, like the foot of an old pantyhose or some kind of thing like that to strain this out if, if you find it's a problem. I don't always do it. Um, it's not that big of a problem, but you will notice it from time to time. But do shake it up. Other types of things you can add into it to make them, your paints, you know, experiment with, make it a little more interesting. I used this for a while. It's a high gloss varnish, um, but what I prefer to save that for actual varnishing now, and they actually make a gloss medium varnish from Liquitex. Um, you get a little extra shine to it. And it makes it a little bit thinner. So if you're looking to make something a little thinner and a little shine is good and works for your goals, then uh, that gloss medium or varnish work well for that. Something I just started playing with and I kind of like is uh, the acrylic pearlescence mixing medium. It's from Sergeant Art. I just poured sort of a prep piece. I just did a solid white background. So there's not too much in it because it's just white. So it's not like there's a lot to, to go with it. But um, I think it made it a little less matte, which is sometimes when I'm going for I've done that. It's almost like a buttery. I've done a solid white pour um, or areas that are just solid white. And I just use Liquitex in it. And it makes it it's kind of a softer, buttery look to it. It's quite nice too. It depends what you're going for. Put that back over here. Now, as far as paints to use, the paints I like to use um, tend to be ones that are um, soft body or liquid already. They um, they mix really easy and they're nice. You'll find um, the Master's Touch does that. I also use some deco art. They make some nice metallics that are quite cool to play with. Um, so I have a box of different ones of these that I'll use. This ends up being a little bit thinner because, you know, of course, like these come thinner. You can, I don't know if you can hear it when you mix them. Um, and then these are more of a medium. Liquid takes, they make soft body. I have some in a tube. Um, I don't know if they make them in tubes anymore. This is how I tend to find them now. I don't use Liquitex as often for the pores. I use it a lot. I use their heavy bodies a lot when I'm doing regular acrylic with brushes and, and different tools. I use their heavy body. Um, and then there's some that you can play with any of them. It's just the thicker they are, the harder it is to mix in. Now, Arteza makes some uh, wonderful paints. I really like working with them, but they do take a little effort, a little more effort to mix in. But they do make some really good paints. Sergeant Art also makes some that are more liquidy. And so you just have to be aware of, you know, play with a little bit. Like, I think these, I mean, they're thicker, like the heavy body ones. They have more pigment in them. So you might use less paint, but it does take a lot more mixing. And sometimes if you mix them in with different things the wrong way, then it ends up being a little clumpy.
Now the gloss mediums, now just setting up for this I thought well maybe I should start adding some of the, try adding the gloss medium into the mix um, of the paint just to see how it works. I haven't done it yet. What I usually use gloss medium for is if I'm trying to tape off an area that I don't want paint on. Um, then I'll, I'll put the tape down and then I'll brush over the edges with some gloss medium, help seal it down a little bit so you know the paint won't leak under. You can get different sized painter's tape. While I'm on the subject of blocking off areas, you can get, I found this works pretty um, nicely with doing pouring and it's a white mask or just some kind of masking liquid. Now it comes with a cool little brush you can use. I couldn't find it today, but really you can use anything. To... So sorry, the camera cut off. So I'm just going to explain the rest of it real quick while I put in, I guess this would be the B-roll of the film. And we we'll just watch some underwater footage at a local Florida spring. But um, the masking liquid you just pour out or, in, or brush out, however you want to get the liquid down into the area you don't want the paint and then you paint and pick up the liquid you just kind of grab an edge to it and it, it comes off kind of like a half dried glue it's kind of fun to play with um, but that's it with the masking liquid let me know if you um, if that didn't make any sense at all with it being broken up like that I did use it also in um, it was sort of the forged and fire battle where I did the pouring part of it in the first half of, of the video of that video. I used the the masking liquid for that. Liquitex and there's another company that I have some from around here. Um, I couldn't find it real quick, but they make like a flow aid. I think I don't think the microphone will pick up on that. But it's essentially, it, it's kind of like water. You can use water to thin out your paints. Don't use too much. Um, some people have great success with it. I end up, usually, I guess I add too much most of the time when I try it. Um, so I prefer to use something that I know is not going to break down the bonds in the paint. Um, this helps. I use this probably more when I'm doing regular acrylic painting with the heavy body or the soft body and I'm trying to extend the, the work time of the paint or if I just want it to um, be a smoother finish and not have as, as many uh, brush lines in it. So, as far as spreading paint around, you can use your hands, you can use um, like a cake decorator spatula thing. This is a paint stirrer. Um, that I got at the paint shop and you can of course you know spread it out that way you can do swipes with this as well as far as stirring stirring sticks I've got coffee stirs kind of the tongue depressor type thing and anytime I myself or anyone around me is using plastic um, forks or spoons or whatever, I, I'll grab them, just kind of clean them off, and I'll use this end to, um, to stir with. Now, of course, all of this stuff you don't really, I mean, to start off painting, all you really need is a little bit of paint, maybe a cup, and you can use glue as your mix if you want, a little glue and a little water. Um, to get it to the consistency you want and then add it into the paint. Um, and you can get all that at the dollar store if you just wanted to try it out for a fun experiment. Um, these cups I actually got at the dollar store. Um, I take old straws and I use them to do some of the Dutch pour or blowing out the paint kind of techniques. also have a hair dryer and a heat gun and all that. Um, I don't like the heat gun too much because it gets hot so fast. And then I tend to get too carried away and I burn the paint or whatever. I use this as my torch. It's just a lighter um, that I got down at the corner store. Picked up a couple of them. Seems to work pretty good at popping bubbles. I'll get some cells out of it. Sometimes when you're painting just some ideas, 
if you want to mix up the paint or drag it out, or, you know, mix the colors a little bit as it's on that on the on the canvas, you just drag it through and spread it out that way, and kind of mix up the paints. They make these in all sorts of different things. Um, you can check out Amazon or the paint your local paint store, um, like Hobby Paint. Not. Um, I don't think house paint stores would have these, but uh, something I'll get. Oh, I use this to clean up with. Magic erasers work kind of well too. I tend to splatter stuff and make a mess. Um, this works pretty well on carpet, but I would go back over the carpet and clean it out of the carpet as well. Uh, the only thing with these, with using the pouring mediums and stuff, is it does tend to. Um, create more of a stain. It's not easy, as easy to clean up as just a straight acrylic because probably the glue type nature of it. Uh, especially when I put varnishes in. When you put varnishes in, be a little more careful about where the paint gets because that's a lot harder to clean up. They make, when you're pouring, you can try pouring over, I mean you could put a cup upside down and pour over it. You could pour through a flower pot. One of my favorite paintings was pouring through a flower pot. I poured one over this recently and it came out okay. wasn't my favorite but it was pretty good. Um, you can just try a bunch of different things. And this is what it looks like when you don't have it covered in paint. You could use these to prop up your your canvas or whatever you're pouring on. Wood. Or whatever. And that's it. You could use wood. Wood panels are really nice to pour on because you don't have to worry about the middle of the canvas getting weighed down uh, by the paint and then almost getting a thicker puddle of paint in the middle. Alright, so let's mix up a little bit here. When, you, when you're picking your cup to... to when you're mixing, it's not so much of a deal, but when you're picking a cup to pour out of, or to do a flip cup out of, try to choose a size cup that closely approximates the amount of paint you want to use on that size, on whatever size canvas you're using, or if you're using multiple cups, you know, try to make it as small. That way, you know, if you pick this size cup and you only want this much paint, then as you're pouring it out, not only are you losing some paint to the side of the cup, but the paint's mixing as it's coming down. And you may want that for the effect you're going for, <laughs> which is cool. Um, but if you don't, then try to pick, you know, a smaller cup that's more appropriate to the size painting you're, you're doing. So, let's see, to mix up some paint. Let's see which color. Okay, so to mix up the paint, Try to measure this out a little bit to give you a, a good idea. So you take whatever paint you want. And I'm going to put a little bit, that was straight orange, and I'm going to put a little vermilion in it just to give it a little bit of a darker red, give it just a little bit of red touch to it. Now, I do like to mix in and find whatever shade I'm looking for before I start adding any of the pouring mediums. So I'll add that. And I'll get a couple other of these cups so you can see the proportions a little better. Get my flow trowel out. Now I do use also GAC 800 sometimes, but I ran out the other day and I don't even have the bottle left to show you because I took out the trash. But GAC 800 and Liquitex both help keep it from cracking a little bit. It'll still crack if you leave the paint too thick as it's drying. What happens is the 
the layers of the paint, like the top surface of the paint might dry faster than the bottom and, or the deeper part. And so then you might get cracks in it or other unwanted kind of effects. And sometimes it happens even though you know you won't know why. You thought you did everything right. You added in GAC 800 and Liquitex or whatever and and you still end up with cracks or whatever. But sometimes it adds to the painting. Sometimes it ruins the painting. And you can paint back over a canvas. Like if you do something and you sit with it a couple days and you decide, you know what, I just really don't like that. You know, just save on cost of canvas. You can pour back over it. I don't have a lot of good luck with that because it just doesn't dry right. It ends up cracking more often. So. So I'm going to mix all these in here. Put those two. And that in. Now I normally don't measure them. Sometimes I'll measure them out like that, but if I'm working on a specific recipe and experiment, I'll measure them out. But if I'm just kind of doing a regular day's mix, I won't do it. Okay. And when you're stirring, you might want to cut the sides. You want to make sure you stir it up pretty good. And I'm probably going to add another thing of Floetrol to that. Now when you're mixing the paints in, you want to make sure you leave enough pigment in there to give you a clear, bright color. And when you're experimenting with the different thicknesses, you can see how it runs off your stir, your mixer. You can also watch in on how it pours back into the cup. Does it sit on top? Or does it sink back in? This sinks back in pretty quickly. You can also intentionally only put a little bit of color in it, a little bit of pigment in it. I did that with this painting. Uh, the colors you see underneath, the orange and the yellow underneath, are mostly, um, I like I painted it in, so it's mostly acrylic paint and stuff. Um, and then I kind of, I wiped it off and I distressed it a little bit intentionally. And then I poured just sort of a tinted pouring me medium over it uh, to give it a little bit of a tint and shine. And then you can layer it in wonderful I mean it's a wonderful thing to, to layer in some tint and stuff like that because then I went back over it um, with some of the thicker heavy body paints and I used like a straight edge to do that in and using liquid paints with a straight edge you can do that sort of stuff and what but be careful if you try if you decide to dam in the pouring like I did with this one it'll try it'll leak out somewhere if you put too much in It'll want to leak out, or you'll have too much. It'll be too thick. Um, and this, and this painting in particular, I think I had leaks over here, so I had to go back and touch up the black here. I used the masking liquid up here um, for the hat, but that wasn't a pouring technique. I just wanted the band of the hat to be nice and crisp, so I used the masking liquid there. But anyway, so there's just different ways. Sometimes you don't want it. thick.
Now there's a bunch of different pouring techniques. Most of them, you know, most of the time, you know, you're just trying to, you're wanting to put paint over the whole canvas. That's where most of the acrylic pouring goes. But you can also be very deliberate in how you put paint on the canvas. Um, this is another one where I used combination of tape and um, masking liquid. And also I just, this whole area down here, I just poured in a little bit and used a stir, stirring stick to kind of put on the edge. There's actually a video on this one. Um, so you can do it different. This was like a bunch of little pours and then this was a more of I put the paint down, did a swipe or two, and then did a chameleon effect on it where you... Um, chameleon Jones over at Instagram I think does a full tutorial on that. Like It has like a, a program you can take where you can really learn how to do it right. Um, but I used a fork I think to do this where you can use a comb or something and you just dip the edges in some silicone and go back through it like that <clears throat> and just touch it in and wherever the comb goes you, you tend to get a cell not always but again like I haven't taken the course so I don't know I'm not as versatile in using that technique in her hands it's it's magic every time I think but um so you can be as deliberate or you can So, now I'm going to go over a couple different ways you can do your pours. I don't knock over the tripod. You can use cups, you can use those little triangular things I was telling you about that I showed you earlier. Um, you can put pins, like um, giant push pins in the bottom. I've seen people do that. Push pins kind of bother my hands a little bit, um, so I don't use them. You can also tape the bottom. If you want to keep this completely clean, um, you can tape it. It's a, it's a very nice look if you do it that way. You don't end up with fingerprints or runoff on the bottom or you get less of it because sometimes the paint doesn't seal quite right but what I'm going to do I'm going to do a flip cup all in the same painting I'm going to do a flip cup and a straight pour and kind of a ring pour and we'll see so start off when you're laying when you're doing a flip cup the paint you put at the bottom is theoretically going to be on top. Although if it's if it ends up being a little bit heavier of a paint, they're going to mix a little bit anyway as you pour them in. But if it's a heavier paint, it'll start to sink. And that's a lot of what the experiment with the different paints is. The metallics sometimes can be a little bit heavier. I used this copper yesterday. I really liked it. It's sitting on top there. When you pour in, things to consider. Um, you can use bottles and stuff to store your, your paints in. And when you pour it in, you could either pour it down the side, kind of let it run in so it doesn't, you can plump it right straight down in the middle. Um, from Some people intentionally pour it from higher you know, depending on the effect you get, and then it might sink back down into the, the other layers of paints you have, so they'll mix in more. Some people like to use bottles and just kind of do a real light layering. Get one of these. Get some blues out. To store your paints, you can also cover them with some plastic wrap. I like the press and seal, um, but you can use regular plastic wrap, maybe a um, trying to think of the right word. I got band aid, bandana, rubber band. Use a rubber band. <laughs> um, to get it on. And this is a gold. The metallics I'm putting in here today are, are from DecoArt. I 
put a little bit darker blue in. And I just spilt a whole cup of orange. That cup of orange I just mixed up. Let's see if I can scoop some of it up here. And that is why I cover the table. It's not the first cup I've knocked over. I doubt it'll be the last. Be nice if I stop doing it though. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna put a little bit of black in here. Just kind of set it off a little bit. You want to have some. I mean, you could do monotone ones, but this is clearly not monotone one since I've got blue and orange. Which I'm hoping they won't mix too much while they're sitting there together because they really do um, contrast each other quite nicely. Where's that? I usually don't fill the cups on the canvas, and that is why. But it really shouldn't matter too much for this. So I'm going to let that sit there, let the paint sink to the bottom. I'm going to surround it. This is. When you put other paint around it, it acts a little bit like a dam, about a hundred percent, but especially since there's not a hole in that cup, kind of the air pressure will keep it down too. So sometimes you want a base coat, you know, put down right before you start the painting, you put down some white or black. Um, or whatever color you want as a base color and it helps helps the paints move around a little bit easier so while you're while you're tilting um, the paints will move better won't stretch out quite as much you'll be able to keep more cells in the in the lines between the paints better this is some white I made yesterday without the pearl essence that I showed you in the other one. Um, so I want to build this one a lot like I did the other. Okay, so I'm going to start this with a regular, I'm going to, where you decide to pour out also kind of affects how you, a little bit how the paint comes out. You could, you know, if you, you could pour directly where you were pouring into, you could pour from the side or if you were pouring into both sides. I kind of mixed up how I was pouring into this one. Um, so at this point, I'll just go off with the side a little bit here. I'm just pouring straight down. You can also do, let's see, we call it a tree ring pour, where you're just kind of doing like little tiny circles. And you can just pour straight down. Of course, you can pour a ribbon. You know, like I said, if you wanted to do, you could drag something through that to kind of, if you wanted to make a different little pattern there. 
after you pour, you kind of want to let it sit for a minute. If you want, you can torch it, get out the air bubbles. Sometimes that'll, that brought out a couple of different small cells. And I'm going to spread that around a little bit before I pick up this one. See, there's so many variables on how you do stuff. It's like infinite number of paintings you can end up doing. And you could even do the same thing twice in a row and end up with two different... two different paintings. What well, if the if you're having paint that's kind of sticking, like I see how that's not kind of wanting to if you touch the edge a little bit it breaks the surface tension on it and it'll help it move a little bit better. Oops. Started that cut moving. I was a little too aggressive on the tilt there. Bring it back to the middle. Also, if you do like little dips, sometimes that'll help you get the corners a little bit better, or like one spot. When it hits the edge, if you want, you could use like a straight edge or something like, or a corner from a box and help keep some of the paint on or to put some of the paint back on. More often than not, I just use my hand. The more you tilt it, the more the paints are going to mix. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you kind of want that. Sometimes you're trying to avoid it. That's why you try to think out the pour a little bit, like what you're going for, before you do it. Because when you're pouring down, you don't want to have to, if you want to kind of keep the pour the way the pour initially starts, you don't want to have to be tilting everywhere, so you want to make sure you do the pour where there's paint on different parts of the canvas. Alright, I'm going to bring it back to the center a little bit. Well, that kind of has a nice look going for it, but let's see what this flip. Now, you, when you flip it, you can poke a hole in the top and do it like that. Um, that helps the paint release a little bit easier. You can just take it off. Or, a lot of times what I like to do is I lift the edge just a little bit, and then I drag it. And yeah, after I do that, I, I usually like to sit, let it sit for a minute and see how it kind of forms up some stuff there. I have paper towels on the ready so you can uh, clear your hands out. So there's a lot of bubbles in there, so I'm going to go ahead and torch that. <clears throat> Make sure those, those pop right off. It's looking kind of cool. And that's one thing, especially orange and blue. There's kind of a color theory thing where they're sitting. But 
Also with the weight of the pigments, the way orange and blue interact is pretty cool. So I'm going to leave that like that, and I want to show you kind of the floating cup technique up here. At least try to, we'll see. Now if you're doing a regular floating cup and you don't already have paint down, you probably want to put some paint down first. Um, that way it'll slide, it will float. Get some of my black from yesterday. And this is kind of like doing a puddle pour in the middle. You don't have to do it this way, but the way I'm doing it. Because you could pour it on the side like you do when you're mix getting your cup ready. So the camera cut off as I finished up the tilting and just hit that edge there and then brought it back to the center a little bit. Um, we'll say that's one downfall of the SLR they like to shut down when you're not really using them. I'm sure there's probably a setting in there that I just haven't found yet about how to keep it on longer. But um, I guess when you're not touching it, it's got a safe system where it shuts itself off after a while. Um, you can use webcams. I have a webcam that I do. Um, I film with sometimes. Usually I only save that for like Twitch, but um, you can certainly use a webcam. I've also got the camera on a tripod, but let's see if I can, I can get it down into the shot. I've got this thing. I've got this thing that you can use that hooks onto the edge of the table, give you more of an overhead shot. And then I've got another tripod that's small you can use on top on tabletop, and it actually comes with a little remote control thing that you can turn in your, um, you, it's for your phone, and you can use your phone um, and the remote control will turn it on and off. It's kind of pretty cool. I'll put a little bit of that down in the description too, in case you're interested. Um, you can use, I've used a GoPro to shoot before, especially if I'm doing spray paint. It's a lot easier because the spray paint's outside, it's a little more mobile. You can use multi cameras, you can use your SLR and a GoPro and a webcam. Just depends how complicated you want to get if you're videotaping it. Or just the phone works fine. The phones nowadays um, work good. I used my um, iPhone 6 to film some. Um, I then proceeded to drop it for the hundred thousandth time I'd had it. Um, but I dropped it in such a way that it cracked the glass bad enough that 
I have another phone now. But anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. Comments, anything. Um, do you have any tricks that you do um, that you'd like to share? Might be interesting. Um, or do you have a question about something else or something I might have tried? Um, or something you've tried? Whatever. Just let me uh, know down in the comments. And uh, thanks for coming by. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.